15 minutes after the top of the hour tomorrow, President Obama is expected to address energy concerns yet again. But in a recent poll, more than 50 percent of Americans think the commander in chief could do a lot to control gas prices. Meantime, 36 percent believe it's beyond his control. So will words be enough or is it time for President Obama to take more action? Let's ask our panel this morning, Keith Boykin, editor of The Daily Voice, Fox News contributor Vicki Ward, and Matt Kibbe, CEO and president of Freedom Works. Good morning to all three of you. Morning. 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 All right, Keith, can, uh, do, you, do you agree with the majority of Americans that believe the president can do something about gas prices? Uh, there's not a lot that any president can do about gas prices, to, to be truthful about it, because oil is a global commodity. It's traded on the international market. So even if we could drive down the prices here somehow and uh, increase production, which is already an eight-year high, it won't have an impact on the overall international price because if you if you can if you're an oil company why would you sell oil to somebody uh, for fifty dollars a barrel in the United States when you can sell for a hundred dollars a barrel somewhere else mm -hmm. Vicky do you agree with that I actually do I also think that politically uh, the president is doing exactly what he needs to do right now um, his opposition is in disarray and he's still ahead of the Republicans in the polls so he's doing exactly what he needs to do right now which is addressing the issue mm -hmm. not all the polls by the way but do well, you think do you, do you do you think Matt that uh, talking about green energy and continuing down that path is the right approach you know I think it's funny because when uh, President Obama was a candidate he had no problem blaming President Bush <laughs> and the Republicans for gas prices so I think it's a little ironic but the fact is everything that's out of his control are the positive things that are happening in energy markets and everything that's in his control, like green energy, like his war on fossil fuels, like the discouragement of new production, these are problems that except, are, except, these, these are his fault. Okay, and he that, has to that, take that, that's responsibility. That's an interesting point. Do you want to respond to that? Yeah, except you said the things are out of his control or the things are not doing well. Well, the oil prices are out of his control, but that's right. not going well. So it, it kind of contradicts exactly what you're saying. I mean, the reality is domestic oil production in this country is at an eight year high. We import less oil from Saudi Arabia than we did just three or four years ago. And the truth is there's international instability that's being caused by the forces going on in, in the Arab Spring that are having impact. Well, well, and, and, don't, and don't we want but, him let, to apply pressure Let's to bring Iran? it back home for a minute, though. What about the Keystone Pipeline? Many people believe that that's simply a political move to, right. to assuage the concerns of the environmentalists, and it might create a ton of jobs. How do we respond to that? But not, but no one I've talked to in the oil and the energy industry believes that it will create jobs for years. So, I mean, that's just one of those things that gets everybody dangled always, out there. Everybody Everybody always says that, that we won't get this online for years. Well, if we stop domestic production, of course it's going to impact markets because commodity prices are forward looking. And every again, everything this administration that, 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 everything this administration is doing is discouraging the production of energy. Can we all agree? Well, I got to wrap no. it up here because we got to move on to the next segment. But can we all agree that high gas prices is not good for an incumbent president? It's, it's not good for anybody. It's, yeah. No. <laughs> all right. Okay. Got to leave that okay. particular discussion here. But the panel is sticking around for this: conservative Southern voters fighting back against the establishment and giving Rick Santorum a sweep last night. What does that mean for the Republican Party? Thank you, Brian. Here's the question for you. Is Mitt Romney still the inevitable GOP nominee after losing to Rick Santorum in Alabama and in Mississippi last night? We're back with our panel, Keith Boykin, Vicki Ward, and Matt Kibbe. All right, Matt, let me tee this one up for you first. You're a member of the Tea Party. I am. Uh, did you hear the voices last night of <laughs> Alabama and Mississippi? <laughs> Well, I thought the whole process is demonstrative of this whole thing. It's very decentralized now. The Republican establishment doesn't get to ordain the candidate from on high. And the people are looking for someone better than Mitt Romney. And his performance continues to be incredibly weak. The only thing he has going for him is the math. But that's not a great way to go into the general election. So the question I've been asking this morning, Vicki, is yeah. is it about the math or is it about the perception of the candidate? Uh, well, we'll know about the math when we get to uh, you know, the convention. Um, I think what we have here, as we were discussing in the break, a fight against the establishment candidate. And that's what we're seeing with the rise of Rick Santorum. What we're seeing with Newt Gingrich, I can only call Gingrich the Grinch. <laughs> <laughs> the Grinch? Okay. I guess you're not, you're not in favor of him I'm as not. a candidate. <laughs> no. All right. Uh, how do you see this, Keith? Well, you know, I disagree with Matt. I think that what is uh, what Mitt Romney's greatest advantage 
percentages is not the math. It's that he has he's going against the weakest field of candidates I've ever seen from any party in decades. Why? I mean, Why do you see it that way? Well, Rick Santorum, um, for all his virtues and, and, and Newt Gingrich, these guys are politically inept. This whole USA Today op-ed that, that came out a few weeks ago that was written in 2009 or something like that when Mitt Romney was saying he endorsed this federal health care plan. Why did they just discover that a few weeks ago? That's political malpractice. For You're a candidate. You don't do opposition research and you're the candidates. These guys are, are horribly bad candidates. Well, and Mitt Romney but, has but that I, is, there, is there something to be President said? Wait, is there something to be said for the fact that Rick Santorum can, can win these two, if he's such a horrible candidate, can win these two states with basically one-sixth of the money of, of Mitt Romney and a grassroots campaign where he was driving around in a car Because they're all weak. They're all weak. Mitt Romney is weak and Rick Santorum is weak and Newt Gingrich is weak. We have three flawed candidates who are running against each other, which is the one of the weakest fields I've but seen. Is, Matt, I, I don't, Matt, is he right? Uh, no, I don't think that's right. I think you're seeing a decentralization where buying TV ads is not necessarily the key to victory. You have to understand that this president is incredibly weak and, and his economy, he, he owns that. And I think any one of these candidates can credibly beat Obama once they get through this process. And remember, Why? this this decentralized process uh, did not hurt Barack Obama. He fought all the way up to the convention, and yet he became two strong the candidates, Hillary two, and Barack. Two exactly. I think it was candidates. a different race, had a different tenor. It was it was a higher class of campaign. Higher yeah. class? I we do. just ran it, clips I, earlier today. I they were that. at each other's throats. How can you say that? But because because the, the substance of the clash. I know. I saw it. I saw it. Celestial. Things it, happening. It, 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 I still so, think it was that sounds subjective. It, it okay. takes a lot to be an incumbent president. There's only been one incumbent Democratic president who's lost in the past 120 years. And it's the economy. And that, and, and and that it's was Jimmy Carter losing to Ronald Reagan. I, uh, yeah. This is not a Jimmy Carter versus Ronald Reagan election. Well, we it's, don't know yet. Nobody knows yet. And that's what makes the election cycle so exciting. I got to wrap it up there. Thanks very much to the panel.